Greetings to all melanated people all around the world. It's really a joy, it's a blessing. It's an honor to be out here in nature and greeting you. Knowing that I'm bringing a message of truth to you, a message of emancipation, a message that will liber liberate you and bring you into true self-realization and self-actualization. A message that will bring you to discover your true identity and would bring you to live in a place of abundance and prosperity. A message that will help you to break slavery, mental slavery and economic slavery. So now with that being said, my brother and sister, I want to speak to you concerning the wheat and the tears. Okay, and that story is written in the Bible. But first of all, you have to understand that the Bible addresses the human mind and must be interpreted psychologically. That the Bible is not literal, neither is it secular history. That the Bible was written symbolically. And that the Bible is filled with allegory. And that when you understand what St. John 1 and 3 really means, you will understand that you have been taking personification for persons. So let me just explain St. John 1 and verse 3 for you, where it says that without him, there, wasn't, there, there was nothing made that was made. No, that all things were made by him, sorry. And without him wasn't, was not anything made that was made. Now that him is not a person 2,000 years ago. That him is a personification of your own human imagination. That's the reason why my brother and my sister, you cannot tell me of one thing in this world that was made that wasn't first imagined. Or one thing that ever going to be made that must not first be imagined. Also, you cannot tell me of one thing in this world. Or one thing in the Bible, I should say. You cannot tell me of one thing in the Bible that was done. That wasn't first psychological. Or first a thought. So basically, you have to first learn the law of mentalism. To understand the wheat and the tears. Okay? Now, whatever you sow in the earth, the earth is going to bring back. The wheat, this earth is going to bring the wheat, it's going to bring the tears. Whatever you sow in the womb of a woman, also she's going to bring back. Therefore, a woman can bring a child for any man in, the, in, in this world. Now, most people understand what I, what I would have just said there, but few understand it in the spiritual and moral world, or psychological world. Now, whatever thought you sow, that is what you will bring back. Okay? And you have both positive and negative thoughts. So when they were speaking about the wheat and the tears, that they will go together until the day of harvest. Whatever thought you impress your subconscious mind with, you will reap the harvest. So my brother and my sister, if you want to change your life, you have to change your thinking, you have to change your mind. That's the reason why the Bible tells you in, in Romans 12, 1 and 2 that you must not be conformed to this world but you must be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And Philippians 4 tells you also that whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are pure, if they have any virtue in them that you must think on these things. Because why? Because the Bible is all about your mind. It's all about your thoughts. The entire Bible has to do with the imagination of man. Because God is your own human imagination, the creator in man. And everything in this world was first imagined. There's only one God, therefore there's only one creator. Thus the reason why there's only one creative power, which is the power of imagining. So, the wheat and the tears is speaking about your negative thinking and your positive thinking. So now you understand the Bible more psychologically. What kind of thoughts are you going to encourage in your being? Are you going to encourage negative thinking or positive thinking? Are, are you going to hold on to hatred, envy, malice and negativity? Are you going to hold on to politics, religion, separation and confusion? Or are you going to be open-minded enough to think on these things that I'm saying to you and do your own research 
and think for your own self. Because my brothers and sisters, this whole brainwashing started since we were little children and we were going to school. They were impressing our subconscious mind to have an employee mentality and to also have a religious mentality and to easily get angry when someone question our religious or theological belief. So my brother and my sisters, all I'm asking you to do is to think more positively and not negative. And that is basically what it means concerning the wheat and the tears. So whatever you sow is what you will reap. And your thoughts is what is creating your reality. That's the reason why you've been admonished in Matthew 6.33 to seek for us the kingdom. And when you find the kingdom, and you find the kingdom is within you, because Luke 17.21 tells you that the kingdom is within you. When you find the kingdom to be within you, that you will also discover the, the secret of creation. And that you will be able to create your reality consciously. That is why I said that all these things will be added unto you. So my brother and my sisters, it's all about the thinking. It's all I have to do with your mentality. So you have no one to change but yourself. You have no one to blame but yourself. You have no one to point fingers on but yourself. So I'm saying to you, you have the choice to bring an end to mental slavery, religious slavery, economic slavery, and learn to create your reality consciously. Now, Psalm 44 tells you that you must come here with your own heart up on your bed and be still. It means don't pray to no God outside of yourself. There's no God that is existing outside of yourself. And when you come in with your own heart up on your bed, visualize, use visualization. Use your own human imagination. See that which you would like to manifest upon the face of this earth. And get into the feeling of the wish being fulfilled in your life. And fall asleep in the assumption that it is done. Do it for three nights. You can do it for seven nights. And leave it alone. But do it repetitively and then leave it alone also Matthew 6 6 tells you not to not to speak to any God outside of yourself but to go into a secret place of meditation because true prayer is desire and meditation and desire is a spiritual sensation and you must close the door which is close your eyes and see things through your mind's eye see things through the eye of God See things through the eye of imagining. See things through the eye of imagination. Because there's only one creative power in this world, and it's the power of imagining. And there's only one creator, and there's only one Lord and Master. And you are the Lord and Master of your own destiny. So my brother and my sister, all I'm doing is pointing you to look within, so that you'll be able to use the power that is in you to create your reality consciously and break all economic and mental slavery so with that being said my brother and my sister i believe i got my message across to you now i want to encourage you also to support my ebooks and amazon the link is right down below and also to join me on patreon and support this great work and for those of you who would like mentorship you can support and patreon by, uh, with 50 or more dollars and I'll be willing to communicate with you by way of telephone and explain more of these things to you and help you so that you'll be able to help others also because it would be the greatest investment you will ever make in your life also at this time I want to just give you the sign the sign of enlightenment the sign of March 6, 22, which is the sign of the rising sun, where it says in March 6, 22, if your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. And my brothers and sisters, when you come in to that experience, you will come to realize that the greatest experience upon the face of this earth can never be known intellectually, that it must be experienced. And when you have that experience, you will come to realize it is the rising of the S-U-N in a S-O-N, 
and that the, without the sun there is no life and there is no light and without the human imagination there isn't anything made that was made and everything in this world was first imagined it was first a thought and that the human imagination parallel the sun and we are the people of the sun therefore we have to free ourselves from mental slavery and learn to create our reality consciously so that means i want to say peace love you i'm out